Hi, it's Adam from BNE Lens. If you're ever in Brisbane, look us up. We'll take you around, show you how to take really great photos. But today, I'm here at Zhongtian Temple. I thought it'd be a really great spot to show you six composition tips to take really great photos with your mobile phone or with your camera, whatever equipment you've got. I'm going to show you those tips and then I'll show you around the temple, which is also a really interesting spot right here in Brisbane. Okay, so how can we take really good strong pictures keeping different composition rules in mind? Well, my buddy here is going to help me out. Now this guy has the most impressive eyebrows I have ever seen. And I'm going to take some pictures of him. Is that okay with you? No. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's start by doing it the way that most people take a photo of their friends. Just straight on with their friend dead center in the middle. That's going to look like this. Now this is not a great way to take photos because really when we look at a photo like this, our eyes aren't going to move anywhere. They're going to go straight to the person in the middle and stop there. What we want to do is try and make a photo that's a bit more dynamic, that's got some kind of movement. That is, it makes our eyes move around when we look at the picture, to look at different parts of the picture. If we put our subject right in the middle there, our eyes aren't going to move away from there at all. So how can we change that? Well, tip number one is using the rule of thirds. That is that one third of the way across the image from each end and also one third of the way from the top or from the bottom is going to be a stronger place to place your subject. And if you place it at the intersection of any of those thirds, then it will look even better. I'm not sure why, it just seems to work. It's something that's tried and tested, it just works. So instead of placing our subject right in the middle, let's try putting him on one of those lines of thirds. Now the great thing when you shoot with a mobile phone is you can actually have those lines displayed as you're taking the picture, as I've got it switched on here. You just need to go into your menu and select grid. So here we've put our subject now one third. I'm still shooting from eye level, but you can see that that image just looks a little bit stronger than the one where he was in the middle. I mean, look at these two side by side. Okay, but the second tip I'm going to mention, don't always shoot your photos from eye level. So when you shoot from eye level, you're basically just showing people the world the way they always see it. There's nothing new, there's nothing fresh, there's nothing special about it. By changing the angle, we can actually change the view to something that's a little bit different, and that makes it more interesting. So when you're shooting people, if you're shooting from a slightly lower angle, then they're actually going to look more impressive, somewhat more important. So that's a tip to keep in mind when you're shooting people. If you shoot from above, photographing down, which is what people often do when they're photographing children, then actually it's going to look like that person is less dominant. They're actually going to look weak and insignificant and pitiful, really. So always be mindful of the height, the angle of height that you're going to be taking the photos from. So in this case, I'm going to position myself a little bit lower than my subject so they look more important. I'm going to get a little bit lower and then shoot up. I'm still going to put their face at the intersection of the thirds. Just bring the exposure up a little bit. And there I have my next image. You can see this change in angle changes the way we see the subject. But there is a problem here. If you look around the image, you'll see those bricks there. They're going to bring me to point three, and that is always analyze the scene. Look for anything that is distracting or any clutter that's going to take the attention away from your subject. Because in this photo, our eyes are actually going to go to those bricks because our eyes tend to go to the brighter parts of the scene. So if some of those distracting elements in the photo are actually a little bit bright, then that's going to be even more distracting. So you really need to be aware of that. So what we want to do is try to eliminate any distracting elements. So scan your scene, analyze your scene, and try to eliminate things that are going to draw our attention away from our subject. Let's analyze this whole scene. 
Well, if I try from the other angle, we've got that sign at his feet, which is extra bright, and that's going to draw attention away even more. But if we look up at the buildings in the background, they actually create a nice sense of place. However, that black light post in the background is also quite distracting. So if we come from this angle, that post is going to draw attention away again. So I guess this is point 3B, because it's related to changing your angle. But in a different way. It's not just about changing, changing your height or changing your position from left to right, but it's actually about changing the angle that you're holding the camera at. Don't feel that you'll always have to hold the camera at 90 degrees, either horizontal or vertical. You can actually turn the camera and it's going to bring a different feel to the photo. Generally, when you start tilting the camera, it brings a bit more energy to the photo. So we're gonna try that here. So you notice when we turn it to the side, it changes the feel and it gets rid of that black post that was so annoying. There's a little bit left in there, but we can get rid of that quite easily in post. And now those buildings, if you look at the photo, those buildings are actually going to create a nice leading line which is going to move our eyes across the picture to our subject. And that is point number four, leading lines. So in your picture, have a look around, are there any lines that are going to lead people's eyes to our subject? And a little tip is that if those lines are at an angle, that's going to create a more dynamic image as well. So this final image that we've taken takes a lot of different things into account, a lot of those tips. Number one, the rule of thirds. Our subject's face is at the intersection of two third lines. And then point two, the angle. We've chosen a lower angle to make our subject seem a little more dominant, a little more important. And then we've evaluated the scene and tried to rule out anything that's going to clutter the scene and distract us from our subject. And finally, point four, we've used leading lines to draw the viewer's eye across the image to our subject at the left-hand side. Okay, so that's a good starter. We've covered four different points all in the one image. So let's try this in a different spot to see how it works with a different subject. Okay, so this time we're still going to take a picture of a statue, but this is a statue that is in the middle of the temple complex. So we start by taking a picture as the average person would do. Dead center, eye level, there we go. Nothing particularly inspiring. Okay, so let's try moving a little bit closer. Now, there we go, we've, we've, we've come a little closer and we've gotten a little lower, but it's still not really working because number one, thinking about leading lines, the line of that roof line across the top, it's actually missing our subject. So our eyes actually travel from left to right across the top of the image and don't even rest on our subject, which is the statue. So in a way that actually distracts our attention away from the subject. Because the sky is so bright, our eyes are going to go to that first and they're going to just follow that line and we miss our subject altogether. So we need to get even closer and lower and maybe we can tilt that roof level to bring a bit of dynamism to the photo and also have it running through our subject. So let's give that a go. So we're gonna step in closer here. Get down much lower. Okay, the roof line's leading through our subject, but let's shift that angle a little bit. And bring up the exposure a touch. And there we have it. Now look at that. That's so much better because our subject is dominant. That's what we want people looking at. There's movement in the image because of the roof line. And it's a much better picture. Let's look at the two side by side. I know which one I prefer. All right, so I told you I was going to tell you six tips and we've only covered four so far. So let's get to the next one. Photos are two dimensional. And what we wanna try and do if we can is actually create the feel of three dimensions in our images. So we wanna create depth. How can we do that? Well, let's have a look at how we could take a photo of the main pagoda here in the temple to see the ways that we can actually add depth to our photos. So we're gonna start by taking a photo the way most of the visitors do. They stand right in front of the pagoda, line it up, get it all central, that's good, take a photo and we're done. 
but we want to add a little bit of depth. We want something, so how can we add depth? We can add something in the foreground that feels close to the viewer, so that when they look at the image, they see this something a little bit out of focus, a little close to the viewer, and then look through that to see the pagoda in the background. And that creates a sense of depth, even though it's only a two-dimensional image. So having a look around this scene, I see that there's some trees over there and maybe I can shoot through those to create a feeling of depth. So let's give that a go. Get quite close to the trees there, focus on the pagoda and take the shot. Okay, so there we have a different shot. There's nothing wrong with the photo with the pagoda as most people would take it. It's okay, it's quite nice. But if you have a look at this one, you'll see it just creates a different take on the scene. And that's what you really want to be trying to do with your images. You don't want photos that are the same as every other person takes. Otherwise, what's the point of even taking them? Take something that's capturing the scene in a different way. That's going to show people something from a fresh perspective. So that's what changing the angle, changing the positioning in the photo, and also putting something in the foreground. That's going to create this different feel and it's also going to create depth in the image. So it's a way to just improve your photos and take them up to that next level. While we're at the pagoda, let's try taking some other photos of the pagoda that are going to be different from the average. A lot of people walk past these statues and don't really notice them, but I think that we can put one of these in the photo and really change the way we see the pagoda but it involves a change of angle. We're gonna to have to get down really, really low so that we're putting our statue at a similar eye level as the, as the pagoda. I'm gonna get right down here, lying on the grass, looking up. And see how that's gonna look. Okay, it's not bad, but I think we can add a bit more dynamism by giving it a bit of a tilt. Let's try at this angle. Okay, get up, wipe the grass off my butt, and let's have a look. Okay, now that's a photo I guarantee most people who visit the pagoda wouldn't have taken. So it's giving a fresh perspective on the scene. So we're looking around, we're seeing things that are going to be interesting, and we're just playing around with creative angles and ways to make the elements within the scene interact with each other. You know, I might try and take one more picture of the pagoda because I notice over near the doorway, there's some pretty plants. And I think that if I shoot up through those, that might create an interesting perspective as well. Just wander over. The flowers on this bougainvillea are so pretty. And the angle looking up is interesting. So let's see if we can integrate the two to create an interesting picture. All right, I'm gonna focus actually on the flowers in the foreground, shoot up with the pagoda in the background. There you go. Yet another fresh perspective by changing our angle and our viewpoint and also putting something in the foreground. Okay, so what are the tips we've covered so far? Rule of thirds. Put things on the lines of thirds and even better on the intersection of those lines. Number two, work the angles. Get up, get down, move to the left, move to the right, and also try tilting the camera. Tip three, leading lines. Have lines that can lead your viewer's eyes through the image to the subject. That's uh, four, yeah? Uh, five, add depth to your photos by putting something in the foreground to show the depth in the image. So that brings us to number six, our last tip for today. So tip number six is create a frame within your image that's going to frame your subject. So in the doorway to Zhongtian Temple is this Buddha figure. And this image is so striking. Why? Because the doorway actually creates a frame around the Buddha, much like a halo. And with the bright light coming from the background, it can really make him pop. That's going to create a bit of a challenge because that light in the background is going to make the figure quite dark if it's well exposed. It's a very high dynamic range kind of photo. But without using HDR, you've kind of got to choose what you're going to do. You can either have the background well exposed or have your subject well exposed. And the question is always going to be, what is your subject and expose for that? So in this case, 
The statue is my subject. So I'm going to actually let that background be a bit blown out. Now I could use HDR, which is something we're going to look at in another video. But for now, let's just keep it simple and make sure our subject itself is well exposed. So I'm going to actually bring the exposure right up on this image so that I can see the details in the statue. And there you have the result. See how that doorway frames the Buddha. It's such a striking image, mostly because of that frame. So that's tip number six. You can put people in doorways or in windows or anything that's going to create a frame around them. And that will actually draw the viewer's eye right to your subject. So there's six tips for how to take striking photos. And you can do it even with a mobile phone. That's what I've used today. But obviously, cameras are great to use as well. I'm not really much of a mobile phone photographer, to be honest. I love using my camera. Uh, but the best camera is the one you have with you. And if that's your phone, then use that. But I can't bring you here to Zhongtian Pagoda and not show you around. So I'm done with the tips. That's your six tips. But hang around and check out this temple because it is an impressive spot and not the kind of place you would expect to find here in Brisbane. complex actually has a tea house as well uh, and it's got some quite unique teas which I'm really looking forward to trying. Today I'm going to try the goji berry tea with longan and Chinese date. It's really hot. Okay, so it's cooled a little bit now. So I'm going to give it another try. That's actually really, really good. It's it's sweet, it's fruity, it's, it actually kind of tastes a little bit like pomegranate, but it's uh, the combination of longa, goji berries, and red dates. Really, really good. Really good. I'm definitely going to be back for this. Mm -hmm. 